Hello, this is Abdul Mati Asiri. Would like to welcome you in another Boeing 737 video tutorial. Uh, this video is the fourth in the series talking about the approach and landing in the Boeing 737 for new pilots. And uh, we'll talk in this video about the airspeed and thrust. I will cover three main uh, areas, which is the indicated airspeed trend vector, power settings, how to use the autopilot power setting, can you calculate a reference power setting yourself and finally we'll talk about the speed and attitude so uh, before we start I'd like just to highlight one thing in the last video I talked about how how I tied the uh, pitch attitude and the sync rate and uh, in reality again the pitch attitude controls the speed and the thrust controls the sync rate however uh, it made sense for me to tie the uh, pitch and the sync rate at the beginning of my flying and now the way I think about it is the uh, pitch attitude is the uh, most important thing that you need to control and adjust and the sync rate and the speed will follow so with that said uh, we'll start now talking about the uh, airspeed and thrust using the uh, trend or the speed trend vector is very helpful as an additional tool that you can use to uh, set the proper thrust and anticipate the thrust changes uh, needed as you know the tip of the trend vector indicates the speed or the forecasted speed in 10 seconds based on the airplane acceleration and the present speed of the airplane so for this example we just maintain a level flight so I'm going to disengage the uh, alt hold mode and we'll uh, revert to control wheel steering pitch and we'll leave the autopilot engaged with the vol lock. I'm going to disconnect the auto throttle and we'll do the adjustment for the uh, thrust using the trend vector. So auto throttle disconnected and we have control wheel steering pitch. I'm going to bring up the PFD next to the thrust lever so we have a better look on the movement needed in the uh, thrust levers. So let's say that I want to accelerate to a speed of 160 for any reason and we'll use the trend vector. So I'm going to increase the thrust and once the, uh, the trend vector reaches the 160, I'm going to stop and then start reducing the uh, thrust as the uh, 160 moves toward my actual speed. So my my goal is to have the trend vector moves with the with my new target speed. Once the new target speed is very close to my actual speed, then of course I'm going to adjust the thrust in a way that the trend vector hopefully disappears by that time, and my uh, speed changes is uh, very slow, and I can just look at the first digit here in the uh, actual indicated airspeed. So I'm going to add some thrust until I have the trend vector comes up. And once it reaches 160, then I'll reduce the thrust to make sure that the uh, the trend vector is hopefully is, is moving with my new target speed. And again, once it is closed, as you can see, when the speed changes is very, very, uh, very low, then we'll move our, our attention or focus to the first digit here in the uh, indicated airspeed. So I'm still can change the thrust to make sure that I am at my new target speed of 160. And now let's say I want to go from here to uh, VRF. So I'm going to go to idle thrust. And again, we'll use the trend vector. Once it reaches the VRF, I will start increasing the thrust. So there is the trend vector is coming up. So I need to increase my thrust to make sure that the trend vector moves with VREF. And then I'm going to increase the speed. I will uh, change the frequency for the ILSs because you know, we are not uh, following the glide slope. And so we have now control wheel steering roll and pitch as well, which is okay. 
So again, I'm gonna increase the thrust to go back to target speed. Anytime you are below your target speed, the correction should be aggressive. And then wait until you reach your target speed and then reduce the thrust if you need to, to uh, make sure that you maintain your target speed. So if you are on the high side, if you are very close to your target speed, but you are correcting from being high, it's not as critical as you are correcting from being uh, lower than your target speed, especially uh, in the approach. So for the uh, thrust setting N1, there are two, three approaches actually for uh, figuring out a reference N1 that you can start with. I'll start with the most practical one, the one that I'm using now, and then we'll cover the other two. So what I use is whatever the auto throttle is using. In a situation like this, autopilot is engaged. We are established on the uh, localizer glide slope. The uh, checklist has been completed. And before I disengage the uh, autopilot and auto throttle, I, I make a mental note of the N1 that the uh, auto throttle is using. And then I start with that. I usually add 1% uh, just to have an extra two knots or so on, on my target uh, speed. So this is the first technique and uh, this is what I use now. You'll find that uh, you'll be uh, very close to this power setting or this thrust setting all the way unless you have a very strong wind shift or when you get very close to, to the ground then you need to adjust it. The uh, second approach or the second technique is a little bit strange and this I was exposed to by one of the senior captains when I first started flying the airplane. Uh, it's, uh, it's a small formula or a simple formula and the formula goes like this. You go and check your VRF for flaps 30 and uh, in this example we have 128. So you take the number above 100. So we have now 28 knots. Divide that number by 2. So we'll end up with 14. Add it to 40. So this is a constant 40. You'll be using it every time when you use the formula. And the number that will be changing is the number above the 100 for VRF. So 28 divided by 2 is 14 plus 40. We have 54 uh, percent N1. That's going to be your reference N1. And 54 percent, if you have a headwind, then you add 1 percent for each 10 knots of headwind. If you have tailwind, then you subtract 1 percent uh, for each 10 knots of a tailwind. So in this example, we have a wind calm. So we'll use 54. And as you can see, 54 and here, the auto throttle is using 56, so it is very close. It's not uh, accurate, and sometimes it's very close to the number that you need, and sometimes a little bit off, but it's a technique that uh, I wanted just to to, uh, to mention to you. The uh, third technique that I, I used when I started flying the airplane is uh, I checked the uh, performance in flight for the unreliable airspeed table and I did the interpolation for each 2000 pound of weight for each of uh, our airplanes and then I came up with the uh, pitch attitude and N1 setting for flaps 30 with 5 knots uh, as, uh, as a target. The, uh, the number that I came up with here as N1 setting was very close to the number that I came up with using the uh, the formula. And by the way, uh, whether you use the formula or this table, then the best thing, of course, to, to note the number before the approach. And the best time to do that is when you do your approach briefing. Another good uh, good time to, to test these numbers is when you are pilot monitoring. Just figure out the number, write it on a scratch paper, and when the pilot flying dis disengage the autopilot and the auto throttle, just try to to monitor. Uh, when you do your regular scan, monitor his the N1 that he's using uh, for the approach and see how far it is off uh, from the number that you came up with. So those are the three techniques. Again, the uh, the best one in my opinion is just to use the uh, whatever the auto throttle is using before disengaging the autopilot and auto throttle and add to that one percent as a start and then go from there uh, now we'll move to the uh, third point for this uh, video which is the pitch attitude and speed 
So for the uh, pitch attitude and the speed, as you know, any changes in the pitch will affect the speed and it will affect the uh, sync rate as well. When you pitch down, you need to take some of the thrust out so the speed does not increase. And when you pitch up, you need to add some thrust to ma make sure that you maintain uh, the uh, speed. I'm going to talk about briefly in this video and I'll continue talking about it further in a future video. The most important thing about the pitch changes is that you need to make it as smooth as possible so you don't have much fluctuation in the speed and as a result you don't have any fluctuation in the thrust or less fluctuation in the, in the thrust that you need to do. I'm going to bring up the engine instrument next to the PFD here. So if I disengage the autopilot and autotrottle now As you can see any abrupt changes in the in the pitch will uh, show the uh, trend vector of the speed and the speed will be changing and then as a result I need to uh, change the thrust as well to make sure that I maintain the uh, proper speed. So the effect of the pitch on the for me is it is on the speed and on the sync rate and the change that you need to make in the uh, in the thrust is as a result of that. So make sure that you make the uh, changes in the pitch smoother and the changes in the thrust also smoother so the speed even if it fluctuates uh, it will be under a better control than if you were abrupt with the changes in the thrust and in the pitch. Now sometimes noon time in the summer even with the autopilot and auto throttle engaged the autopilot and auto throttle will have a problem maintaining the uh, the speed the autopilot will lock on the glide slope and the localizer and it will sacrifice the speed for the uh, for the glide slope meaning that the uh, auto throttle will might go to idle thrust just because the speed is increasing and then uh, the trend vector will comes up the green will show that the speed is decreasing very fast and the auto throttle will increase the uh, the thrust again and then you'll have the fluctuation so the auto throttle and the autopilot ma might do it or uh, to be accurate the auto throttle might do this fluctuation uh, if you are flying in the summer at noon time in some of the airports but what we are after here is to uh, for you to be able to control it uh, uh, better and anticipate so again i'm going to talk further about uh, this point in a future video and uh, that will conclude uh, this uh, video if you have any questions comments or concerns please let me know and as always this is Abdul Mati wish you a safe flying and smooth landing thank you for watching